Hello everybody, this is Peter from Burger Arcade at BurgerArcade.com and here we are with another tutorial in our little hack and slash series. And see, I want to start working on the in combat flag for us, for our, our player character, so we can actually start attacking things back. So let's go ahead, uh, it works pretty much the exact same as it does for the mobs. Uh, if we go ahead and we look at the base character, we actually have a boolean value here called in combat. And if we go ahead and actually take a look, whoops, spell that right maybe. We actually have a setter and getter for it. Uh, so I thought. Yep, three of five. Uh, down here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and actually make this flag or the Boolean value up here uh, private. So before I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and rename it. And I'm just going to put my underscore in front of it, just like I do with all my private variables. We'll go ahead, we'll let that do its thing. Then I'm going to go ahead and make it private. There we go. And after I'm done that, I'm going to come in. Well, before we do that, let's actually take a look at our character. If we start him up, uh, we'll go ahead, uh, we'll turn that off. And if we go ahead and actually look at our uh, character over here, I want to come over and take a look. We're not playing with this anymore. Uh, the advanced movement, we need to assign a melee attack and an incoming, or sorry, an idle in combat uh, one handed weapon attack or animation. So let's go ahead and assign those now. So we're actually going to have to find our prefab for this. So we'll go ahead, we'll stop Unity. And we're going to come down to our resources folder. We're going to head, open that up. We're going to go down to where we have our prefabs for our character. And I'm going to start off the muscular one. We'll notice here that we actually have some animation clips uh, open here. Uh, we have the one for melee combat and the one for idle. So let's go ahead. Uh, we're going to go drag those on. So I have those in art assets. Uh, wherever you have them, you might have them stored somewhere different. Uh, so we have the one-handed idle. This is the one I want for now for idle. I'm just going to go ahead, drag and drop that on. And we need a melee attack. I'm actually just going to use a one-handed attack. I'm not really sure which one to use here. So I'm just going to grab the first one. We'll drag that on. Now I've got to go all the way down. And we've got to do it for the fat guy too. So it would be probably kind of nice to actually move this out somewhere else. So uh, it's just a little easier to get to. Might actually just have been better to go this way. I think I, I might actually have to add them here. I will find out. So let's go back up. Let um, see. Not idle. We want the one-handed idle. And one-handed attack. We'll go ahead. We'll save them off there. And now when we start it up, we'll go ahead and select our character. They should have both those animations assigned. Ah, uh, they do. Uh, great, let's shrink this down. Let's go ahead and we'll head back into our script. Uh, we're going to head over to the advanced movement script. And everything should already be in place for us to actually attack. The only thing we really need to do is figure out a way to uh, trigger that flag to say that we're actually in combat. So if we come down, I remember we're getting a reference right here to base character, which our player character and the mobs are inherited from. And it'll probably just be easier to look here. We'll just do in combat. And let's go down. Ah, yes, right here. So if, we're, if we actually have an idle animation assigned, and it takes a look here to see if we are in combat, it'll crossfade that in. Uh, else. I'm so sorry if we're not in combat. I'll just do the regular one. Uh, else we're going to debug this out. So it looks like we're still working on that, but that's fine. Um, everything's in place. So let's figure out how we're going to trigger this. Now, when the mob is actually in combat, I'm going to go ahead and actually open up the AI script. So we'll head into Unity, maybe, if it'll let me. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and we'll open up, uh, I guess, the AI. We'll start there. And we'll open this up, scroll to the top. And just a quick recap on how it works. Uh, they have a sphere around them that when we enter it, it automatically puts them into uh, combat. 
And when it goes into combat, that's when it goes ahead and gets the target, which is the player, and then starts its finite state machine of uh, its attacking and everything else. So if we actually find it, I believe it was on trigger enter. Um, I believe it was on trigger. Yeah, right here. On trigger enter. Uh, so this is when we collide with his, um, his sphere of perception. Uh, goes ahead and it checks to see if the what collided with it was a player. If so, it sets the target to be uh, the player. And it, then it goes ahead and sets its state to search. And then it starts it up. So right in here, I want to be able to go ahead and get the player's uh, in combat flag and go ahead and set that. Now we're going ahead and saying target equals other transform. I just want to go ahead and take a look here. Obviously, target is a transform. Other uh, is a collider. We're going to want to get the game object. And we're going to want to get the component of PC. So I'm actually going to do it. Uh, ba -ba -bum. Well, as soon as we actually get the reference here. So we should be able to go. Well, let's just try to call it directly. So we're going to say target. Dot get component. The component we want is well, actually PC is static, I believe. Let's go ahead and try this out. PC, yep. Dot in combat. I'm oh, sorry, we need to get the instance uh, in combat. Yep, this is actually easier than I thought it was going to be. And if we look here, it takes a bool value. And I forgot to actually in combat is going to be equal to true. Now, when we leave, we're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to set it to false. So if they leave, we're going to set it to home. Uh, then we're going to set it to false. So I'm going to do it right up here. So if the other person, basically the person leaving our, our sphere of influence is the target, uh, PC instance dot in combat will equal false. Uh, there we go. Now we don't have a way to attack yet, but we should be able to put our character into a combat stance. So let's go ahead and we'll try this out. Uh, I'm just going to clear this. Uh, we'll clear here. We'll run up to him. And we just keep running. So we're going to have to, let me see here. Uh, PC. We do have an idle in combat. Let's go ahead and actually select the mob here. And uh, we'll need the scene view for that. Uh, let's zoom in a bit. I'm having trouble selecting the mob. <laughs> All right. Stop selecting the train. We just want the mob. Uh, let's just go this way. That's the PC. That's really annoying. Well, let me select the mob. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and just select uh, the spawning area. Um, here we go. And what I want to look at is his animations. Did I have these set up here? One-handed attack, one-handed idle. So I probably need to assign those to my player as well. So I'm going to go ahead and check that out. So I'm going to start off with the muscular one, because that's the one we're actually using. That does not have him. Uh, one-handed idle. One-handed hit. We'll go ahead and we'll assign these. Uh, I forget what model I'm using. I believe I'm using the muscular one. I am. Uh, we're probably going to have to add some debug in there just to see what's going on. So we'll go ahead. We'll run up here. Uh, attack idle, attack idle. Now this is us here. So apparently it's not setting us to our state, if we go all the way up to the top here. So 
So we're not going into combat. Actually, if you look at the code, we are going into combat. We just don't have an animation set up for it. So if we actually went in and went PC, um, attack, and we'll just say state. And just to make sure we're gonna append this on, we're gonna say PC dot instance dot in combat. We'll go ahead, we'll save this off. And if we start it back up, uh, we'll see that it actually is triggering our in combat flag. We just actually have to add, a, add an animation for it. And we'll run up. I'm just go ahead. We'll clear this off first and we'll run up. And sure enough, P, uh, PC attack state is true. Uh, we just don't have an animation for us to actually run or we don't have the command to actually run it. And we're going to probably see we're already over 10 minutes. So let's go ahead. And we'll work on that next in the next video. As always, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.